And good afternoon. Welcome into Market Talk on this Thursday, January 20th. Appreciate you making time for us here today, making us part of your day. I'm your host, Jesse Allen. Thanks for joining us. Find us online, markettalkag.com. That's our home on the web, markettalkag.com. We have plenty to discuss today. Not going to waste uh, any time here as we talk about the market trade. Soybeans, another big day there today. Let's bring in our good friend Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing joining us here this afternoon. Brian, good afternoon, sir. And just for starters here, looking at this market, soybeans, we have to start there. Start of the show again today. Just another yeah. huge up move, Brian. Yeah, another big update. And uh, you're, you're going to see a very large weekly reversal posted uh, as long as beans don't, let's say, collapse tomorrow and really t sell off. But um yeah, you're looking at gains today of uh, double digits, but strong double digits. 34 and a half in the March contract, 1425 and three quarters. Uh, took out the previous high that we saw here on the 7th of January. And now the only point left really is uh, we go back June 7th is uh, 1445 and a half. That's your contract high. Um, you got some strength from a number of fronts. One, the market tipped over by Tuesday morning, it looked pretty sour and started to break out move below the 21 day moving average if you think about that the average price for 21 days and that was all predicated on a real cool down in temperatures in argentina and brazil and then some much needed moisture however with uh, some i guess benefit now on thursday uh, some of the moisture uh, relief in southern brazil some of the southern brazil states in particular pretty light um, and not a lot necessarily in the forecast you've got soybean oil just skyrocketing here lately uh, traders were really beating up the oil along the meal, and meal sort of peaked out once Argentina got its rain, but the trades took that spread, spun it around. Uh, but you got talk of palm oil um, you, uh, being utilized more for bioenergy, biodiesel. So you, that kind of talk, you got talk and rumors. I haven't seen it con uh, uh, necessarily confirmed, but that China was in buying beans from the U.S. The way it moved, mm -hmm. I, it's got to be some fire where that smoke is. So. So you get all of that, but the other thing you, you get in a market like the beans, where you had kind of this pennant formation and you broke some support, that those who went short often will put their buy stop orders, they follow the market down. And once the market turns, the idea is, well, if it's not time to be short, we get kicked out sooner than later. Um, so you get a lot of buy stops that are triggered and that pushes the market higher. And then lastly, this goes for corn as well. A lot of talk of, you know, fund money again moving into commodities for inflationary concerns. So so a lot of things, Jesse, happening in the bean complex all in just a short period of time. Yeah, a lot of things. I'm also hearing the rumor that some Brazilian farmers are not selling new crop soybeans now just because of some of these worries we're hearing about the portus of the crop there in parts of South America, Brian. I That, that wouldn't shock me nor surprise me. Um, and, and it's kind of you know, I'm going to say like our corn market was at the end of December, prices kept climbing higher and farmers weren't selling and they weren't selling because prices are climbing higher and they're climbing higher because of this or that or the other thing. Um, but you bet if you uh, if you see maybe some shortfall of inventory, your temptation is to say, mm, let me put the skids on some of the selling that I plan to do. And that that would make some sense to me. Uh, technically, nice, nice. Big turnaround week. We're not in the overbought territory yet. Uh, we're not seeing these momentum indicators indicate, hey, you better be selling this. So, so pretty good looking week so far. Hypothetically, in soybeans, real quick, if we have another fairly sizable update tomorrow and we're sitting near that 1450 mark on the board, I mean, that feels like uh, some uncharted territory there, per se, for some growers here because. You know, not too long ago, we were trying to get to 14 last year. Now, you know, that'd be yeah. putting us closer to $15 beans. I mean, that's something that it's it's hard for somebody to maybe wrap their head around a little bit. Well, well, it is. Um, and, you know, when, when you get into these windows here, you see mm -hmm. lots of volatility, increased prices. Um, if we look back to spring, uh, we saw similar, and then we mm -hmm. saw how fast things can go down. So given time of year, I would be inclined to, um, if you've got you know, inventory, to to keep rewarding the market. It doesn't have to be big sales, but just keep rewarding it, keep your pay raise. What you're doing really is warding off this idea that all of a sudden get caught up in some something that we don't even know about, that tomorrow comes along or next week that really kicks the legs out from under 
the market. Now, the USDA attache lowered the bean crop to 136 million metric tons. Uh, I didn't mention that before. That's important to know because it's sort of a, you know, more of a formal signal that the USDA number, which was supportive, I think at 130, I think it was 139 um, out of Brazil, uh, that's still trending lower at this point. And you know, prices are up. So you're getting sort of the inverse relationship between declining crop and, and higher prices. And uh, what's interesting is, you know, I'm proud, proud to me interesting, maybe it's a matter of time that the market um, a week ago or so when it was hot and dry, didn't have a little more fire to it. Um, and maybe, you know, it wanted to see what this rain event would look like, but now here we are. Um, mm -hmm. So big uptrend intact yet. Well, on the flip side, you know, Wednesday we saw up moves across the board. Today, quarter wheat didn't do that. Uh, quarter wheat, I'll call corn firm. I'll call wheat slightly lower on the day. I mean, what's your thoughts with what the quarter wheat markets did today? To me, it just felt like there wasn't any news there, any fresh news to move those markets. No, no fresh news. So if you're a buyer um, or even a speculator, and you look at corn at 612 today, let's say, you got to ask yourself, well, I buy it. Where do I think it's going to go to? Maybe 617, three quarters. That was a high from December 28th. That bearish key reversal still looms in there. But you got to kind of have that perceptive view. The thought was that the rain more benefited the Argentine crop where it could be benefited. Now, some of that corn apparently was in pollination with that real stretch of heat. Um, but But there isn't much new news in corn. So the export pace lately hasn't been stellar. Um, there's sort of this general feel that typically the ethanol uh, starts to wane a little bit as we move into more of the heart of winter. Um, it, it just it hasn't been a leader. Uh, either wheat led the way higher or beans have led the way higher, but corn has been a follower. Still kind of that new level, though. Uh, we were, you know, 585 forever. Now it seems like we're $6, give or take 15 cents. And uh, we'll see. Now, maybe it kicks in tomorrow, but I, I think, Jesse, what I really think it is, too, in corn is a lot of farmers, I think, had a lot of corn on hand, and they're starting to reward the market. Uh, it's January 20th. I, I, again, you're going to be looking toward getting pretty busy in eight weeks, prepping for har for uh, harvest, for spring, and then actually planting and running wide open there. So, um yeah, I, I think you're. I think you're seeing guys really thinking about moving corn. It, it might slow this week because of the cold, but it'll it'll be full force next week. Well, I think one thing as well. I'm just looking uh, through headlines, and I haven't seen Russia invade Ukraine yet. I know that's the other big hot button geopolitical issue that could have an impact on the quarter wheat markets, just with the amount of corn of wheat that comes from that region uh, on the export front, Brian. Yeah, just a quick comment on that. Um, let me take a quick gander i want to say it was um 20 million metric tons um yeah so ukraine reportedly has 20 million metric tons of corn that yet needs to be shipped between now and july um yeah conflict with russia that that makes a lot of people uneasy what what does that actually look like does it affect it any or is it a major deal um i it, it I don't see how it's a good deal. Let's put it that way. I, this war yeah. is never a good deal for anybody in the pathway. So um, that's my, th my thinking on that. Yeah, and I think just with all that tied together, I think as we wrap up the week, get into next week, it's going to be really interesting to see just where all these great markets go uh, with all the different news items out there, the inflation mindset as well. Uh, it, it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting couple of sessions, I think, ahead for sure, Brian. It is. And, you know, some Januaries we are, you know, so range bound. It's like watching paint dry. This isn't one of those. Um, big picture, you step back a little bit. It's just reflective of just tightening world inventories. And then a lot of other stuff that 24 months ago, you and I couldn't, you know, have made up or written a story about between, you know, the, the, the pandemic going world. I mean, so such a quick move worldwide. Um, all of that negative energy prices. Now you got energy prices just skyrocketing um, and, and trading upper 80s uh, in crude oil. Just mm -hmm. lots and lots of things that on any given day we might look at. Big money flow. You've got a stock market that posted a very 
big reversal here recently been on the downtrend maybe rebounding some today but maybe some concern equities overvalued rebalance out of equities maybe into more inflationary commodities so just a lot of stories that are on that are unfolding and, and need to be you know probably told and, and looked at daily very very true let's look at livestock here brian um hogs today another solid day in the hog market and on the flip side cattle a little down today i know feedlot country looks like business pretty much done for the week and there um i start cattle or hogs you take the pick but which one do you uh do you want to talk about first here what we got going uh, on well the stars the hog market especially those deferred months really on a massive climb here you take a look at july hogs had a little bit of a pullback on the 11th $96 and all of a sudden at 104. So you got an $8 gain in a matter of days. I think a lot of that might go back to just this idea that uh, India is is going to be, you know, they open the, the gates to import pork, uh, higher corn prices, higher meal prices, those kind of things. Maybe the idea that this hog herd, along with some pandemic issues with um, labor, just is going to remain tighter on the inventory. Um, I don't know. That's that's a hard one why the summer months are, you know, racing like they are, but it's not like they haven't been here before. We've seen this before. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit more on so you might remember the supply chain disruptions where <laughs> the packing plants either shut down or at such a low output that um things really skyrocketed. Uh good cross the board demand. Um you know, trying to, from consumer economics, I, I have an egg economics degree, so you look at different economics sectors and consumer economics, you know, what are people actually buying or willing to buy or wanting to buy? Um, I don't know if there's this kind of fear of, low, you know, lack of supply, but it, this looks to me like, you know, people are still cautious to plan trips and travel, but they're going to, you know, probably go to the grocery store and buy. So at least that's what we're seeing. So Maybe there's some of that out there. I don't. I don't know. It's really hard to measure that sentiment because, you know, are people willing to let? that As an example, willing to pay more for beef? They all okay, inflation. We got all that, but we're not. A lot of us aren't driving anywhere, so we're saving two or three thousand dollars a year in lack of driving. So mm -hmm. you know, what's a few hundred dollars for beef or pork? Um, maybe that has some sense. Maybe it doesn't. But, um, but just some really good. I think displacement of money again pushing into commodities and pork's the recipient or or. Um, I should say um, uh, the, the lean hogs. Now, cattle, um, kind of feathers higher this week. I'm kind of scratching my head why the board isn't, you know, why it went to hogs and, and not cattle. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just a matter of time before now we see cattle. They've got all the right, the right stuff in place, I think, to go up and not only fill a little gap on the April contract that it left in early January, but head back up to the 146 level. You've got this bitterly cold. Weight gain is not going to be good this week for cattle. Um, You've got some weather issues. You're not moving cattle as much. I I think the cattle are the next, you know, next market to make a move here. Brian, how about the dairy market? Any thoughts there before we run out of time today? It's like the wild west. Um, down sharply today, but race straight higher on big demand, tightening inventories. Um, you know, the, the 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 general thought is if you look back at the. Um, at the most recent milk production reports, the, the herds leveled off or got a little smaller. So there's the perception you're not increasing supply in a bigger picture. Um, I don't know about that. If, if you know, if corn corn would stabilize or head lower, twenty-two dollar milk can go a long way. But again, I I think it's kind of run its course or ran out of steam here. That really had a big surge down nearly limit today on some of the contracts. But it looked like we probably peaked the contract. Two days ago, if we don't reach those highs, as an example, March milk hit the uh, 22.95, almost 23. If we don't get to that level again, it would not surprise me. I don't. I don't think that's a market that participates in, you know, some other new uh, paradigm and 25, 26 dollar milk. I don't see it. Well, Brian, I know folks can reach out to you and the team there, at Total Farm Marketing. They can go online, totalfarmmarketing.com. But if they need some advice during these volatile times with all these news items floating around in the market, I know they can give you guys a good old fashioned phone call, can't they? Yeah, we'd, we'd appreciate that. 800 334 9779. That's a, that's a, a great way to just have a quick, uh, quick conversation. Uh, we always appreciate appreciate those. Um, they can also email us uh, as well or email me uh, 
um, at, at Top Farmer. Um, we've got a website they can look at if they'd like. The, and so my, my email is simple. It's Brian with a Y, Brian at uh, TotalFarmMarketing.com. They can look at our website, like I said, Total Farm Marketing. And on there, we have Top Farmer Report that I publish, have corn, soybean ideas as well. So take a look if you want to do that. Um, and we'll have commentary on there. But uh, but yeah, just a phone call. That's That usually works best. Well, Brian, I know we got a short window with you today. I appreciate the time as always, sir. Thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your week and weekend, sir. We'll talk to you next week. Uh, my pleasure. And uh, everybody stay stay warm. It's going to be cool. I would agree with that sentiment. Stay warm. Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing, our guest today here on Market Talk. That's going to do it for the show for this Thursday, January 20th. Find us, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.